This video is about frameworking only, so it might be boring for some of you. But since I spent many hours making this custom glassware, I thought I would show you some of my work. I am not a professional and my creations look accordingly, but you only get better by trying, so here you can watch me trying. As always, I want to thank my awesome community and especially my Patreons for supporting me. Now let's get right to the video. To tackle my 100ml cesium vial, I first have to make a vial large enough. I bought this um, 40 millimeter borosilicate glass tube, but working a tube this diameter with my small torch will be a challenge. And not only because the torch has a pretty small flame compared to this large tube, I also have the problem that I don't have any rubber stoppers I can use to close this end here to blow inside. So I will see how I can do it. And the first thing I'm going to do is to seal this end here um, to see how the tube behaves and if I can work it at all. Even turning a tube this diameter with one hand is a challenge. My plan is to use this 100 milliliter still, it has 100 milliliter flasks. I already built it a while ago and I want to seal the larger vial onto here. The reason is that I have to create this neck here where I can seal the ampule under vacuum. And the problem is that I'm not confident that I can do it with the large diameter tube. So I'm going to fuse the tube onto here and for that I have to create a opening in my large diameter tube right here where I can fuse it to my still. As you can see, I created a hole on the top that fits this tubing here. It's not perfect, it's not perfectly centered, but I think it's as good as I can do. Now that we have a hole here, which we can use, I'm going to seal it uh, on the other end. I just realized that this vial is too long when it's connected to my still to fit in the oven I'm going to use to anneal the glass, so I have to shorten it. This is the smaller vial now. Again, the bottom doesn't look great, but as I said, with this small torch, the flame doesn't even wrap around the glass tube. And you know how it works. If in doubt, blame the equipment. I'm sure somebody more skilled than me uh, would have been able to make this really nice, but I think it's good enough. 
the last time I used a still like this, I wanted to seal it right here and I noticed that the diameter is just too large. So I will try and hope it works. I will try to heat it here and create a narrow section where I can seal it under vacuum. Let's just hope it doesn't break or collapses. It is extremely hard to move a piece that is this big around the flame. While trying to keep everything aligned. And the challenge is not to create a narrow section, the challenge is to create a narrow section with still a lot of glass um, at the wall so the wall thickness isn't too thin which means we can safely seal it in a vacuum. So this section here is now narrow enough that I feel confident I'm able to seal it under vacuum. And I also managed to keep the glass on the walls thick enough um, to be able to seal it. The next thing is I don't want to use a silicone tubing as my vacuum hose. I want to use a metal um, tube and therefore I'm going to seal a KF flange on here, which means I have to make the KF flange first. Um, if you're interested in how to make these KF flanges, I made a video about that, so I'm not going to explain the process in detail. I'm basically just trying to recreate this shape here. I'm sorry for the background noise. Um, so I can clamp these two together. I want to attach the KF flange right here, so I have to remove this old um, connector for a silicon tube. In case you're wondering, I got asked or I got told that I should always turn on the fuel first and then the oxygen. The problem is I'm using an oxygen concentrator. If I close this ox oxygen valve here, um, the oxygen concentrator will uh, make an alarm sound because he notices that there is no oxygen flowing. So I'm just holding the uh, lighter right here and lighting it on fire like that. It's not the correct way to do it, but yeah, you know. I've now connected my blow tube right here so I can blow in the still if this collapses. Now I'm going to blow a hole in right here to connect my KF flange. I now have a hole right here that I can use to connect my KF flange. 
I now want to connect my KF flange to my still right there. Um, so that's what I'm going to do now. To be able to blow inside the still, I have to close off the KF flange so the air can't escape. It will be pretty uncomfortable to hold it here because it's getting quite hot. But the piece has to be this short. Normally I would use a longer piece, or somebody who is skilled would use a longer piece, attach it here, and then form the KF flange right here. But I sometimes need several tries to get these right. And so I don't want to risk attaching it to the still and then messing up the KF flange. So I made this piece first. We have now sealed our KF flange to our still. Again, it doesn't look nice, but it doesn't have to. Um, yeah. The last step is to seal the vial onto my still right here. So I have to cut this vial here. I'm going to score it with a glass cutter and then lay a hot bead of glass onto the scored line. And let's hope it just breaks cleanly at one location. I'm going to wet the location where we scored. It helps to crack the glass. Okay, it broke. It's not perfect but it's good enough. I told you that I have to make the vial here shorter because this still wouldn't fit in the annealing oven. Some of you might, might ask yourselves, what is an annealing oven? And the reason you anneal glass is that you create tension or stress inside the glass. And what I'm using right here is a polariscope. And if you want to know what a polariscope is, I made a longer video about it um, in short. The polariscope shows you stress concentrations in translucent materials, in this case glass. And you can see that the glass we didn't work on, that has been annealed before, shows no or very little stress. The stress are these blue-white lines. And all the areas we heated show these blue and white lines. Also on the top here, where we connected the flange, you can see the stress and down here where we connected our vial and also at the bottom here where the vial was sealed. The stress is created because the glass cools unevenly and some parts contract while others are still hot and if it cools down in this state um, yeah, you have internal stress in the glass and if you heat the glass you risk cracking it so it's not safe to use the still in this configuration or in this state. And by annealing it, you basically put it in an oven, heat it to around 550 degrees Celsius and let it cool down really slowly and that way these stress or these tensions can dissipate and you can use your glassware safely. After annealing, I will show you a, uh, a video where you can see that the stress is mostly gone. Here you can see the annealing oven and the still barely fit inside, so it was a good thing to shorten the vial. On the side you can see the controller box which creates the temperature profile. 
So after kneading the still, you can see that all of the stress that was visible before is basically gone. Before you were able to see these blue white lines in the areas I worked on. And as you can see they are gone after kneading the still. They are still a little bit visible down here. But compared to before, it's basically gone.